I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, January 8th meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15. It is also being recorded for air. Comments made at open session will be recorded. The first order of business is the scheduled appointment of Eagle Scout candidate C.J. Perry with their request for a board vote regarding his proposed Eagle Scout project. C.J. you want to present? membership drive in March. Our first event that we're going to have our first networking event is going to be at the Social Savings Bank. 
tomorrow night, 5 30 to 7 30, if any local businesses would like to come. If you'd like to join us, we'll be there. Uh, the new state of office is this year that will be at the taking over coming June will be William Boyle, who's going to be the president this year. Carl Honey, who's going to be vice president. Mike Damon is going to be treasurer. Kelly Lee is going to be secretary. I'm uh, really looking forward to gearing um, up and getting some more local business to, to participate in the chamber. Uh, the chamber, as you know, we've worked with uh, really hard with the town with the Pembroke Day. Uh, we have a legislative breakfast that's coming up. March 30th on Friday, Friday, March 30th, uh, 2018, that's going to be at the uh, Emerald Country Club. So we're going to have Josh Cotler, Vinny DiMacito, Matt Martori, Tom Calter. Um, we'll be talking about our events. Our uh, second networking event will be in February at the Historical Building. Holly Dunlap from Emerald Bridges is going to sponsor that. We're going to bring in hopefully the new director from the council of Angel to introduce himself. Um, other than that, um, anything that I can help you with as far as um, chamber or sponsorships or anything that I can do to help with the economic development or anything like that, can reach out to us. Ed is on our um, board this year and our uh, office of planning from the Pepper Foods Department, but also so we have some community outreach. So if there's anything that we can do to help you to facilitate, uh, please reach out to me or uh, put in the Good. Great. Is the weather good for business? What's that? The weather's good for business. The weather is really good for business. Right? Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to the new fire station on the course and stop from opening all the ties. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, Peter, I just want to thank you for coming in and giving us what's going on at the Chamber. Ever, ever since the board has invited members of the chamber to come before us, we've had um, a large group of people come in and they've explained their business to the public. And I hope the public has listened and learned about some of the businesses we have in Pembroke. And uh, it's good to hear your plans for the future. And uh, so we would welcome. Any other members of the chamber to come before us at 7 o'clock on a Monday night and give us a little update on what's going on? I think it's been a positive thing. And it's great for us too because it's something that we can give to the members of the chamber to speak uh, in front of you because a lot of them are new to the town and um, we've got to get them some sort of um, push so that they can get in front of you so that they need it and get away with them. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Mr. Chairman, um, under the Chairman's Chamber's report, I was going to provide an update on the FY 18 budget process. And long ago, uh, my birthday year, I would like to take that out of order so that I can uh, you know, help with the discussion about it. Sure. Um, Mike and I have been working uh, obviously for a while on uh, FY19. Um, we've gotten uh, input from 99% of all of the department heads. Uh, we've got a couple that we still just got to nail down, a couple of items, uh, specific items. And we had a meeting with the members of the school committee and the superintendent on Friday. And uh, we're moving ahead now. What Mike and I are right now is we are looking at three different budgets and uh, Mike just just want to explain uh, what those three budgets are and I can explain maybe some of the details. I'll back up just a little bit. Um, we've identified from fiscal 18 to fiscal 19. 1.9 million dollars in the new revenue. Oh, eight months left. But um, the problem we're running up against is again, it's health insurance. We have forecasting a 10% increase in our budget. And that's another thing about the problem. And we take that in our pension assessment multiple thousand dollars. We have that to be back in the council of possibility. Thank you. 
but not to as it stands right now to provide the same level of service to under employment and students. So a lot of things still in that regard. So what we have now is uh, two we have two budgets, right? Actually three levels of budgets. One that is balanced in the sense that the dollars in in the dollars of the budget. Doesn't mean the services of city class size is going to see all the city staff is the same. The second um, budget we're working on is a budget that will require roughly a million dollars in new money um, but by what means of the towns. The third um, budget we're working on is the budget that they require about three, close to four million dollars in external sources funding, and that would be fully uh, funded by the departments, from the principals to the chiefs to the department of public works, and everybody else. One last two budgets. Yep. The last two budgets my talk about um, would allow a couple of departments to increase. They're paid um, according to the, you know, yeah, the yeah, staff yeah. needs in the department, yeah. and that would be in, in police and fire. It would also, um, in, in the first scenario, which Mike was talking about, which would require a, a, an additional million dollars uh, to, the, uh, to the town budget overall, that would also uh, provide for, um, there would be control here that uh, we would add about. Uh, Three hundred thousand dollars in the payment management plan for the DPW, and so uh, to, you know, so those are things that you know we, that Mike and I were working on today. That we have a, a list of things that would be added if we go to what we call the level one uh, adjustment, and then level two, as Mike alluded to, you know, is close to four million dollars, and that would include uh, additional personnel that is the optimal uh, request that. Uh, not only the big three departments, uh, DPW fire teams, and also the school department have the request. Um, but as we said, we need external funding for the level one and level two budgets to be funded. So um, we have no rich on COVID, I don't know what you have to take up that back as a money. So the mechanism. That we have is that we have to that would be the to be for two budgets, one with an overall one without I think for too many years, we have been skating around, just providing what we consider to be the basic services and not being able to do some of the things that were obvious to us that we should be looking at doing because it would require a lot of life. And you can only do that for so long. And I think this is the tough year because, as you stated earlier, last year we got really hit hard with the health insurance, which hadn't happened previously. The previous increases on health insurance were like in a five percent year. Oh, we didn't have any. So you could say, well, you got away with it. Well, now we're looking at 10, 12 back to back years. So we're really stretched out for the limit. So um, personally, uh, I'm very happy that uh, you and Ed have been working on uh, an alternative plan uh, and not just pro uh, presenting to this board uh, a level funded budget, which is pretty much what we have a history of. Doing. And we have heard from many of the department heads in public service and the DPW in particular about what they feel that they really require to provide the services necessary 
for a town of 19,000 people. And uh, so I, I'm not for any particular budget I haven't seen. But I, I just wanted to say that I am happy that we're going to see three and the reasons why that go with each of those three. Even though two of them, they require additional funding to ask the taxpayers for. That's our job. The taxpayers are our final say as a procedure. And so we'll, we'll go forward. One of the other things I just wanted to mention, in this month's issue of the Beacon from uh, the MMA, the uh, editor has an article about the uh, federal tax plan. And I was interested that his last paragraph says the bottom line, uh, the federal tax reform could present more immediate pain for local governments. And uh, the MMA's worry is that in the long term, the new law will weaken state and local finances. Now, we don't know if that's going to happen, but it's an interesting opinion from uh, MMA, which uh, is really on the side of the towns and cities to provide their services. So I just thought that was an interesting uh, additional item. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> like, a little further to the question that everyone had. You touched on it a bit, but if you can expand the touch. Um, could we have prevented this? I'm glad you asked that because I think people's initial reaction when this topic is discussed is it's all something wrong, so we did something wrong. It's not what happened. Not sweeping by, but doing the best we can with what we have here. A long time, we've been able to do that. Um, I got alluded to originally before we were able to do that 10, 12 years ago when the state stockers were not, um, when the state wasn't spending all its money on health insurance, fully funding um, their obligations to the town and staff and other things. Um, as the state's getting squeezed on the health insurance, the town is also getting squeezed on the health insurance. The rates go up to the extent that we think they can go up next year. Um, there's three years in a row for the increase is over 2 percent. It's really a constraint. And the other thing that's going on, it's, it's, a, it's an unfunded mandate. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. But the bad part of the unfunded mandate the external force that is squeezing this is out district placements. We are required to have terminology for students to provide the best education we can. That's one thing I think is a great thing that's what the society does. That in the health that is, the state requires us to do it because of the So we're being squeezed by these external forces, the national and state. We can do it the best we can. Um, so, the three budgets that are being discussed. Uh, one thing I did not hear is uh, the OPEP, the other post employment benefits. We would like to have a program to aggressively pay those down at the best we can. So right now, obviously, we're in a position that, that takes a little bit of the back burner, but some of the uh, more ambitious targets that we have out there on the table, uh, do those include some uh, uh, relatively uh, payments to those OPEP? What we've been doing is in the fall, we have a certain cash in the time, because we have a lot of left over for the OPEP. Liability is growing faster because of medical education. It's growing faster than we can it. We are working on the plan where we can get our actual actual to get into this. Um, 
to have a schedule that, that for you that you fully come in the coming time, which we hope is 2032. That would be very great. That would begin with all the whole federal circles. And by the hopefully 2005 or 2016, we'll be fully over the this budget, any of the three levels, and the So that's the thing. Right. If, if, we're, if we're discussing uh, mm -hmm. operational override to get us back to where we should be, that's part of the discussion. Okay? We don't want to go over the well uh, more than we have to. And if we are going to go over the well, we want to make sure we're asking for a uh, proper amount. Because we're, we're trying to right the ship against all these external forces, see the federal government not paying. We also want to uh, have the foresight to, to take as much as we can at, at that time uh, and still be responsible to the taxpayers. One, one, one last thing is, <clears throat> if you, uh, could you put a number on it, Mike, if uh, we're only allowed to raise 2.5% uh, as a levy limit, which $1 million extra put that? Um, Actually, a million dollars would be a long term. That is the question. So, we're, we're able to, uh, to raise two and a half percent, and we will be looking for five percent. Correct. Two and a half percent on top of it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad we have the initial facts. We'll obviously be talking about this a lot going forward. Uh, do we have any public meetings uh, yeah, going forward, or are we still in the uh, department, department meetings? Yeah, we're still at a couple of departments, um, and, and hopefully we're going to have, uh, you know, finished product for you guys in two weeks. Yeah. We'll, I don't want to normalize the meeting, but I do have uh, a couple of questions that relate to a brand new committee. Uh, the Capital Funding Study Committee that we be meeting for the first time on Wednesday, and all those folks are intimate to what we'll be discussing uh, on the budget side. So, uh, do you have any information to discuss for, for those folks? Quick memorandum of what we've discussed here, maybe? On what do you mean? Capital Funding Study Committee. Yeah. So, if, if we I plan on being there. You're going to be there, so at least we can have a discussion with those mm -hmm. folks. Some of them are, are on the advisory committee already and, and, and right. part of this discussion. Others are our, our department directors. So uh, they want to have as much information, have as much input as necessary. Yeah. And what I want to share with the, the committee on Wednesday night is the fact that the town received a $15,000 grant to do uh, the revenue forecasting plan for the town. And then uh, and I'll explain exactly what that entails. And then maybe at a future meeting, I could have a uh, potential uh, um, vendor that will do that for the town. You know, this, and this could be another governmental entity that would not require the town to issue such a proposal. But I'll be, I'll be uh, prepared to deal with that on the Wednesday night with the committee. Dan, that um, suggestion, I hope that that's good. That's helpful for us. Direction on the back of the board. Yeah, that's, that's why we all want to be a part of this, this discussion. Um, that was a very good note to end it on for 15,000 grand. Mike, thank you for coming in. I'm sure we'll get together and fiscally responsible for the budget because I look forward to seeing that. I have one other question on the Capital Funding Study Committee. Do we have a full committee now? We were looking for a person from the community. No volunteers. None yet. You have eight other people who are ready but to meet on Wednesday. We're, we're moving ahead with that committee, which is which the could, important issue. Which could draw your volunteer. Yeah. That could really energize people. Okay. Thank you. Build it and move on. Right? I hope. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right. Move on to the board action items. The first item 
board is in receipt of a letter sent by the board requesting to be removed from total membership and assume the vacancy as alternate from the zoning board of appeals due to a change in the available. Well, the uh, request that the uh, appointment to alternate Phil uh, Kelly. Second. Any opposed? Any second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Should I vote yes? That is yes. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, say, if I may, that uh, Bill has been on the UBA for many years, chairman as well, a long time. Uh, just has an issue where he doesn't have the amount of time that's necessary, so we certainly can use uh, Bill as an alternate member of the CBA. The next item, the board is in receipt of a request and recommendation from former council and aging director Anna Siri and Gatra administrator Frank Gay to appoint Ryan Joseph of 100 Valley Street as the town's Gatra representative. There is no term limit on this role. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we appoint Joseph Ryan of 100 Valley Street as the Gatra representative of the town of Pembroke. That's All right, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Uh, yes, as well. That passes again. Next item, the board has received a request. The board has received an application for a one day liquor license from the Number of Chamber of Commerce after hours of event on February 13th. 5 30 to 7 30 p.m. at the Pembroke Historical Society Building, submitted by Holly Dunlap of JSTH Enterprises, designated Business Association, Pembroke Center. They seek to serve beer and wine at the Historical Society Building at 16, uh, 116 Center Street, November 13th, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, 5 30 to 7 30 p.m. Mr. Chairman, I would move to grant the application of Holly Dunlap on behalf of the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce for a one day special liquor license to serve beer and wine. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 14, to be exercised at 116 7th Street on February 13, 2018, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. All right, motion and a second. I'll take away. Looks good. All in favor? Aye. All right. 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 We have an appointment to the whole column of all the services. We skipped over Susan Shea, nominated by John. Oh, yes, I see that. So we'll move on to that item. And attached to the request and recommendation former council and agent director. That's it. That's it. The recommend from the same place. So. Attached to the request and recommendation of former council and aging director Anna Seary to appoint COA outreach worker Susan Shea as the town's old calling and elder service representative. Mr. Chairman, I was going to appoint Susan Shea as the old calling and elder services representative for the town of Pembroke. Okay. All right, with a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. 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 As temporary living quarters as a result of fire damages incurred in the house fire on January 1st. The proposed trailer is 12 by 60 feet and replaced and inspected by the town once approved for delivery. They are requesting a six month renewal permit. The application site for the drive is um, 
Second. So the motion is a second. All the paperwork looks good. So all those in favor. All right. Uh, any opposed? Uh, as well, so that passes again. Mr. Chairman, uh, can I bring up something to the board regarding the you know, trade and the committee comments? Absolutely. I would suggest that we uh, make a provision for a 30 day uh, allowance that uh, comes with the town administrator's office and it would allow the town administrator to make a grant a Permit for 30 days so that the people can get started because they got on the fire because they went for so many people already. And they probably don't know how to do this on their own property. We can do this much better for the institutions that we have to make it more meaningful. And then we can take it out of their bodies and <laughs> so I would like to uh, move that the uh, board of selectmen would grant the town administrator the authority to uh, sign a temporary trailer permit for a period of 30 days. Bill said that as having experienced the fire myself, I know. Uh, Immediate steps are necessary to, to provide the proper housing for families that have that issue. Yeah, I agree. I think that's good policy. It's a very good idea to streamline this process. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We need some more time to get it done. Yeah, we put it in the electric room, plumbing, and so forth, and we'll deal with the electric company for a little bit. We need to do South Shore Race Management, LLC, only 5K gold race on the Learning Way Road, as preferred by the police chief on April 21st, 2018, at 9 a.m. Venting Strong 5K Road Race. We'll begin posting temporary signs at 6 a.m. Remove them after the event. This request will be reviewed for approval by the police chief and the school department. This road begins and ends at Pembroke High School, down Learning Lane, and turning left on the Hop Long Slash Lake Street, left on the Fourth Street, left on the Valley Street, left on the Sandy Street, right back on the Hop Long Street, and right in the right lane near the high school. Mr. Chairman, I would hope that we grant the use of Town Road uh, Learning Lane, in particular, on April 21st, for the Benton Strong 5K Road Race, uh, subject to approval of the uh, Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. And just for the viewers at home, we will hear the proposed route to so be made available on the as well. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All those in as well. So pass the hands. Moving on to the next action item. The board is in receipt of an application for a special use permit for our event. Tournament Director Joseph Russell of Leverson Kayak Bates for Bass Fishing Club for the Catch and Release Fishing Tournament on Sunday, October 7, 2018. The town beaches will be closed for the summer season by that date. They have received approval from the Conservation Commission to impose their standard conditions. Mr. Chairman, I will move granting the application to the use of the pond for the kayak fishing tournament on October 7th in Nevison. Second. For the motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectman's meeting of December 18th as written. Unfortunately, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? As well, we will accept the minutes of December 18th, 2007. Now we'll move on to open this. So we're dealing with the continued discussion of early slash non medical Medicare eligible retirees health insurance contribution rates. The board is waiting for a legislative update to representative of the regarding the council's recommendation to request a special act of the legislature to address hardship concerns of one portion of classification for early or non medical Medicare eligible retirees versus all retirees. Pending legislation H2567 and act relative to future public retiree health care benefits. This bill aims to address the critical and ongoing issue of cities and towns increasing insurance premium contribution percentage on existing retirees. I get the opportunity to speak to Representative Kappa, who is on the file on the petition on our behalf to the board of the board of But in the time that's come since our last meeting, we have had um, uh, dollars given to us from the state house that Representative Rodriguez uh, has a bill. Uh, Sorry, so, Mr. Chairman, I believe it's a suggested motion to stay this item until the board receives further information of the action of the legislature. I Second. All right. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That's what I love. So now we're down to table. That's the second. Yeah, I want to thank Representative Cutler for being as quick as he was with the answers. I've only been working on this for a month or so. And it's been two holidays and two snowstorms and doing so um, to get the information and to get it out accurately. Uh, I appreciate the uh, ability. Thank you all as well. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the whole business. Uh, Ed, could you speak? If the survey that was requested at that recent retreat was ever uh, formalized, the time wide survey, could you want to work with uh, uh, the folks over at Tufts to develop a, a survey for the town? Yeah, I think last week, because of the storm and some of the uh, information <clears throat> that we tried to forward to uh, the human uh, facilitator at Suffolk. So, we're still working on the show. We're still working on the show. All right, so we're going to make a good progress there. Another item we have on our old business is 
the record of approvability and payrolls of December 27th, 2017, and January 2nd, 2018. Mr. Bolter has submitted the record of December 27th, 2017, whereby he reports that on that date, he personally reviewed 11 accounts payable for warrants totaling $679,840.61 and two payroll warrants totaling. One million two hundred and forty thousand three hundred and eighty-six dollars and eighty-three cents as prepared by the county company. And authorize the itemized expenditures for payment. Do we have a motion to accept the report? To accept the report of the record approved bill dated December twenty seventh of January second. Second. All right, the motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I as well. So I pass it. <laughs> yeah. Additionally, Mr. Bolter has submitted the record of January 2nd, 2018, by the airports that on that date, the person that the five accounts payable for foreign store one million three hundred thousand three hundred ten thousand three hundred eleven dollars and seventy eight cents. One payroll warrant totaling two hundred twenty four thousand four hundred ninety two dollars and seventy two cents as prepared by the town of and authorize the itemized expenditures for payment. We have a motion to accept the report. Second. All right. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? I vote that as well. So that passes in the end. Also, Mr. Chairman, I want to quickly remind you that because of the shortness of last year, uh, we will saw the email that I sent out regarding the announcement from uh, Representative Cutler's office and Senator Zeno's office that the town has been recipient of two more earmark grants, uh, $25,000 for public safety uh, purposes. And 100000 for improvements to the housing department. Uh, we'll be submitting a letter uh, on request to release those funds, and then hopefully we'll be getting contracts for the appropriate state agencies to start the process of spending those funds. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the weekend uh, with the storm that we had, I received a call from uh, an elderly housing facility in town with uh, issues about the plowing and salting of the parking area. Uh, it was reported to me that it was a hazardous situation and uh, they were afraid the elderly people that were living there uh, getting access to their vehicles if they needed to go to the store. Uh, we're going to have a problem. So I was able to reach the chairman of the DPW, uh, Mr. Bastinelli, and uh, he followed up on that with the director. I also talked to uh, Ed Fawn about it as well, and uh, we got the situation resolved. I thought there was a little discrepancy in who actually is responsible for plowing the parking areas and solving them. But it's necessary that we don't do housing facilities. But uh, apparently the GPW does that, and uh, so that's good news that it was taken care of. New business, our issues that arise could not reasonably be anticipated by the chairman of the board selected at the time of the notice proposal. American Mobile Homes is requesting a temporary trailer permit on behalf of the homeowner Barbara Gardner to place a temporary trailer in 5 inches from Washington Street as temporary as well as for the fire damage to her cluster. January 7, 
Chairman, I would move that the board go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining off litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. The Pembroke Permanent Firefighters Association, Local 2351 of the IAFF Union Grievance. Chair does declare, I'll take a call. I yes. 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 Lastly, next regularly scheduled meetings of the board selected for January 22nd, 2018. Excellent job. Thank you. Sorry. 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 Yes. Nice, quiet, peaceful. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy. Good. I know, I know, I know. He's upstairs. Thank you. Yeah, it's wise. 